Hey everybody, it's Linda Hayes. Today I want to talk about a different topic instead of talking about Belize. We just got back to Canada from Puerto Vallarta and I have 10 tips for your trip if you're thinking of going to visit there. So the last time I was in Puerto Vallarta was probably over 10 years ago. And even when I did that, as well as other Mexico trips, I've always done all inclusives. And we just returned from a different type of trip and we're already planning to go back next year because we loved it so much. So the kind of trip we did this time was first go to an all inclusive for five nights. And after that, we went to a home exchange right in downtown Puerto Vallarta. And John's daughters actually came in from Calgary to join us. So we had four of us for that trip. and we found tons of different ways to save money that I want to share with you along with some other tips if you're thinking of doing a trip. And our home exchange host is the person who helped us with the first one which was on traveling to downtown from the airport. So let's talk about taxis as well as Uber. So when we were at the airport we were quoted 800 pesos to get over to downtown. Instead, our home exchange guest said, you should just walk across the bridge. So basically go left outside of the airport, walk across the bridge, and that way your taxi will be a lot more affordable. So we actually paid only 300 pesos, so less than half of the cost. And on the way back, we actually went and took Uber, and that was even less. It was less than 200 pesos, and that of course depends on the time of day that you book. So tip number two is about airport booths. So as soon as you get your luggage and walk out, you're going to see a ton of desks with people uh, clamoring for your attention. And they basically offer you free tours. They give you maps, all this kind of stuff. But I would recommend immediately walking past those booths because this is the way that they get people into timeshare presentations. And what they'll tell you is that you can come to a presentation that you usually get free breakfast and they say it takes two hours. But what I've uh, experienced in the past is that it's typically a lot longer and often you waste almost an entire day going to these things. So I wouldn't recommend doing this at all. I'd walk immediately past, tell people you don't need a taxi, just keep walking, go left, go get your taxi the cheaper way that I talked about. And if you're interested though in a timeshare, because I'm not saying they're bad, instead research these quite a bit in advance and you may find resales that are cheaper and you might also narrow down where you would like to get one rather than just being sucked into wasting a whole bunch of time on your vacation. So tip number three is about restaurants. So if you want to eat close by downtown, right on the boardwalk or the Melicon or in the marina, you're going to find things to be very pricey. However, if you just are willing to walk around a little bit or take an Uber, you can find great affordable local options. So I want to give a few examples of places that we liked with some price examples. So typically what I often do is ask locals where they like to eat and then you will find the great places. So the first one we found through our tour guide Caesar, you can see a picture of him and his family that we had dinner with there. And um, Pepe's Tacos, you can see a picture at the bottom of their uh, one of the uh, plates that they do that kind of looks like a donair stand, but it's different. It's chicken. And our bill for seven of us was only 715 pesos. So that's about 42 US dollars for seven people. So very, very affordable. And then another place we ate is called Pollo Feliz. So our bill there for four of us was only 380 pesos. So on average, we can eat for around $6 uh, for most of our meals, as long as we're looking at the local restaurants. Next, I want to talk about breakfast. So most days we actually ate at the pancake house and it was because the food was great and it only averaged around 500 pesos for all four of us. So they had great fruit, waffles, French toast and pancakes. Also, you could see the omelet at the bottom with hash browns and fruit. And for some examples of prices, the omelet was 95 pesos, so very affordable. And then we also did eat at the golf course a couple days when John was golfing. So for breakfast, there, I actually ordered a breakfast sandwich that was really good for 90 pesos. So there are really affordable uh, breakfast options you can get, although some other places are a little more expensive. And then for dessert, I highly recommend the churro stand. So it's only a couple blocks away from Pepe's. It was uh, Caesar who uh, took us by there when he was doing a tour. And actually when we were at Pepe's with him talking about going back to get churros, we actually had a tourist come up and say, hey, where is that? We took an Uber trying to find that place 
place because they had heard about it. So they don't typically open until uh, the evening, so maybe around 6 p.m., but if you can find it, definitely go check out the churros. So tip number four is about credit cards. So when I travel, I try to put everything I can on my credit card because I get points, and I did expect that we would need some cash, of course, for the flea market, but what I didn't expect is many restaurants to also be cash only. So Pepe's as well as the Pancake House, for example, are cash only. Luckily, we were able to use our bank cards in the bank machines to get out cash, but we took out quite a bit at once because the fees, of course, using a foreign bank machine are quite high. So make sure you bring a little more cash than what you're used to doing. And hopefully the prices I gave you uh, give you a little guidance on what you could bring. So tip number five is about shopping. So we like to go to flea markets because you can get tons of t-shirts and other types of souvenirs. And there's a great one right by the river, which wasn't far from where we were staying. And most people do know that bartering is common in Mexico, but if you don't, make sure you do this. So if someone says a product is 500 pesos, we would generally start at about half that and settle somewhere in the middle. The other thing to note is that you get a better price typically when you buy more. So vanilla, for example, is a very uh, good price in Mexico compared to what we pay in Canada. And if you were to buy three bottles, you will generally get a lot better price than if you just buy one. Same thing with t-shirts. We bought four from one store because it was a lot cheaper that way than just each of us buying one at different, different stores. So tip number six is about the weather. So a lot of people look at the forecast and see rain every day and get worried. And that's the same in Mexico as it is in Belize. But even during rainy season, it doesn't rain typically for the entire day. And in fact, for our trip uh, for almost two weeks, we had barely any rain at all uh, when we were out during the day. There were some storms in the night. One evening it poured around dinner time as well. But during the day we had great weather. And because it was rainy season, John actually was able to get tea times and go golfing three different times. And there was hardly anyone else on the course. So that's one of the advantages of going during rainy season is things are way less busy and it is quite humid but the weather definitely doesn't look near as bad as it does in the forecast. So for number seven I want to briefly talk about COVID restrictions because it was a bit different than I expected. So as a Canadian you still need to wear masks on the airplane where Americans don't but we don't need masks in Canada or in Belize any longer but in Puerto Vallarta it's a bit different. So Puerto Vallarta the airport does require masks but other areas of downtown do not. So if you're going out to a restaurant or going on an excursion or anything like that, you don't need a mask in Puerto Vallarta. However, Nuevo Vallarta is a different province and that's where a lot of the resorts are and they do still require masks. So when we were at the Occidental going to the buffet, we did need to wear a mask. So what I'd recommend when you're traveling, because all places might be different, make sure you have a mask with you just in case. So tip number eight is about luggage. So we were a few days without luggage. So make sure that you pack some essentials in your carry-on. Things like bathing suits and underwear are maybe hard to find right off the bat. The other thing is, is that even though it seemed like we were doing a report at the airport because they asked us where we were staying, told us our bags would come on Thursday, turns out we had to actually go into WestJet in the website and fill out an online report. So if you're flying, um, and lose your luggage, make sure you go online and see what you need to do. Because with language being a little bit of a barrier, it might be hard to understand what is required. Because at some airports, you can actually fill out the report there rather than doing it online. So tip number nine is about duty free. So a lot of people love to buy liquor when they're leaving a country and Puerto Vallarta has a way you can pre-order your duty free and save a lot more. So there were many sales that we saw online that weren't available in store. And at the airport, they told us it's best to order about four days before you're leaving Mexico. So if you are wanting to get duty free, go online using the link I provided here so that you can save even more. So the final tip number 10 is on where to stay. Should you stay in, all in, in an all-inclusive or in a local community through Airbnb or home exchange? So for an all-inclusive, there's many organized activities. So that's a great thing if you like beach volleyball, bocce ball, cornhole, bingo, all those kind of activities are available. And of course, as much food and drink as you want. 
Now, the thing that isn't as good about all inclusives is sometimes the location is in a resort community, not in the heart of town. So you're missing the local experience. So we really liked being able to walk, see the flea market, find local restaurants and bars, find pool tables. All those kind of things are available if you're staying in the heart of town. So we actually like doing a combination of both on this trip, but it really just depends on your personality. Do you want to go out and check out things in the community or do you really just want to stay in a resort and relax for the week that you're traveling? So we really love all the amenities in Puerto Vallarta and if you're planning a trip, and want to look into home exchange like the condo we stayed in, check out the video I did on that and reach out if you have any questions.